I'm your inner dream monologue and you're fast asleep. So I'll be quick. Great job using the Colgate Optic White Overnight Teeth Whitening Pen before bed. When used as directed, it gives you a visibly whiter smile in just seven days. So while I fly and talk to animals, you're removing teeth stains with ease. Sweet dreams. And when you wake up, keep on living life to the brightest. Colgate Optic White. Find it at all major retailers. Well, Matt, we took like a month break from talking about songs for these TV show episodes that we covered. Yeah. But now it's time. Now it's time to dive in and really dissect the album even worse. And I'm curious, before we dive in, yeah, what are what are your, at this time, as we're just about to start covering these songs, what are your memories of even worse? How did it, how did it stack up against a lot of the other Al tracks? This is another one that I heard... You know, the more that we do this, the more I'm realizing that, especially uh, for me, I guess, I was late to the game on just about every full-length album pre-Bad Hair Day. Okay. Like, I was just in the comps world. I had best ofs, I had food album, I had TV album, I had the permanent record uh, set, you know, like, um, so I, this album is a complete piece of its own. I don't even remember the first time I heard it, but saying all of that, if I look at the track listing for this record, like more than certainly way more than Polka Party, like yeah. I know all these songs. Like these have really like not all of them, but almost all of them made it made their way into some something of his later okay. on down the line. There's a lot of notable tracks. So there's yeah, you know, I mean my initial reaction before we talk about anything on this record is that it slaps. Yeah. So this was early into me becoming an Al fan. I was actually piecing yeah. together my timeline a little bit today. And, you know, Amish Paradise introduced Al to me. Mm-hmm. I bought the VHS. Well, first someone made me a cassette tape of Bad Hair Day. And I listened to that. And then I bought the Al VHS tape that kind of introduced me to all of his biggest hits. Uh-huh. And then my cousin gave me a cassette tape of Off the Deep End. Like... When I say people gave me cassette tapes, like they made me a copy of their sure, yeah, of their yeah, tape. Yeah, of course, he gave yeah. me a copy of Off the Deep End, and then just gave me his Alapalooza CD because he's like, I'm not really into Al anymore, and gave me his Alapalooza CD. <laughs> even worse yes. was the, f- I think even worse was the first Al release that I personally bought. I went and bought the cassette tape at like a local used CD store because mm. I loved the song that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And I've talked about it before many, many years ago. I want to say it was when Alpo- uh, Alpocalypse came out, which was, you know, over 10 years ago. Uh, for Geekscape, I did like the definitive ranking of all of Weird Al's releases. And I think I put even worse kind of in the middle. Like, mm-hmm. but I said this on a past episode. I randomly popped it in the other day. Well, now it was a couple months ago. But during the summer, I listened to this when I was driving and I was like, this is. This might be a contender for my favorite release of Al's. Like it, yeah, it's it's consistent and it's solid. And we've talked before about albums where it felt like the parodies were a little bit lacking, or the originals were a little bit lacking, and they switched off. and And this feels like generally pretty great choices across the board. Yeah, it's all you know, I, I, songs I, that kind of stood the test of time that are being parodied. Like the originals are exactly. kind of peak Al. Like it's it's interesting. So. The rec- yeah, very much so. The recording of this album started on November of 1987 and continued until February of 88. It kind of rejuvenated his career after the critical and commercial failure that was our last album that we talked about, Polka Party. Even worse is uh, distinct of being one of the two albums that he did that doesn't have any polka renditions of pop songs or medleys. The other one we've already covered, which was the debut. And it is his best-selling album. It peaked at 27 on the Billboard charts, which is 
in, that is insanely high for a comedy album. <laughs> that is insanely high. Now, it's funny. So are, is that sh- like, you know, obviously we can you got to be careful what you believe on the Internet. I saw something in my research about this that said that that Bad Hair Day sold more. It's possible. And I'm pretty sure at this point in time, mandatory fun charted higher. Um, right. Mandatory fun did chart higher at yeah. this point in his career. This is his biggest record. Yeah, this is this we're is just talking huge, about. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, we'll have to we'll come back to that as we get there, I guess. But at this moment, if we're just talking chronologically, we're ignoring what happens in the future. This becomes Al's biggest, biggest record, which yeah. honestly on is I'm still surprised to hear that. It's, Even me talking about how good it is and how much I enjoy it. That seems odd because it also feels like one that, you know, in terms of radio play, I, I don't even know the answer to this. Like, I don't I think it was really just fat. Right. Like, I don't think anything was, else. So there on this record did that. Well, there was two songs listed as singles on Wikipedia. I can only imagine that they were radio singles. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that one of them, a video was shot, but never released. Interesting. Um, and we'll get into that when we get to that song. Um Real quick breakdown of some of the information on Fat. Well, actually, I do want to call out with even worse uh, that unlike a lot of his other albums, this was the first one where most of the critics praised the originals as well as the parodies. One critic even wrote, Yankovic still manages to shatter all previous barriers in coming up with some really funny original material, citing good old days and stuck in a closet with Vanna White as some of his all-time best originals. Mm. Um, So for this song... Uh, this was the lead single, Fat. Just real quick, one other thing before we get into it. Do you think it's a coincidence that Polka Party was an album that was a failure for him commercially, did not do very well, and then one year later he makes another record that does not have a polka on it? I don't think that that's accidental. I think that that was a very right? conscious choice that had to you have think, been. I, I guess so. I mean, it's interesting to think. this is After this, every record he makes has a polka. Yeah. Uh, but following Polka Party, he skips one. And yeah, I, I had not thought of that until I looked at the track listing for this and following all of our Polka Party conversation that it does feel like maybe, I don't know, maybe he just wasn't feeling particularly psyched to make Polka music following his big swing in that direction. And not that that's a Polka record, but you know what I mean? Like just thematically, maybe it was like, let's take a break. Yeah. No, I think that that's fair. Uh, so. Yeah. We're about to talk about Fat. It's a parody of Bad by Michael Jackson. Uh, Al was kind of hesitant to do another parody of Michael Jackson. Uh, He said at this point he was still kind of just known as the Eat It guy and didn't want to just become known as a guy who rode Michael Jackson's coattails. Um, But when he eventually decided to to go for it, uh, he presented it to Jackson. And Jackson not only approved it, but gave Yankovic access to the Moonwalker subway set that they used for the music video. So you're seeing this shot in the same <laughs> subway that Michael Jackson has used for the Moonwalker special. Yeah, it's amazing. Apparently, they caught him like just in time. They managed to like get this shot. Like they were about to tear the set down. Yeah, and uh, Michael approved it. And then they were like, "Please wait and let us shoot this <laughs> video." And they kept it exactly how it was, which you can tell. I mean, it looks exactly the same. Yeah, Yankovic presented Jackson with the gold record of Even Worse when the album sold 500,000 copies. Uh, Jackson was actually so pleased with the song and video that he ordered 12 copies to be made to give to his friends. And Yankovic has said, he doesn't have to let me do this stuff. The only reason he does is because he does have a really great sense of humor, which which is nice to hear. And we'll be diving into the music video. We'll be diving into the song. But this did get Al his second Grammy for best concept music video at the, uh, at the Grammys. So that's huge. But like you said, it's crazy. This is the best selling album because the song, while the music video was massive, the song barely cracked into the hot 100. It peaked at 99. The video of this song is huge. Uh, So um, such a big deal. And it's funny, like, again, we're going to get into all the video stuff, but to me, more than, I guess, more than anything we have talked about so far for Al, in my mind, this song and video are completely linked. They like we've talked before about how I was like I didn't even remember that Living with a Hernia had a video. Yeah, but this is there are jokes in the video that are not in the recorded version that I like would forget. Like the to me, it's just the video is what I think about when I think of this song. I remember when I bought the cassette tape for this after having mm-hmm. seen the music video. There were things missing in the actual yeah. audio that I'm like, oh man, like 
There are certain things where I'm like, ooh, that should have stayed. Like that should have been in well, the song. And if we go all the way back to when he did Eat It, we make that we talked about in that episode how there's the guitar solo in the middle of Eat It that ends with the explosion of and Jim yeah, West. Just and that the explosion and should the, have just been in that recording. The, the explosion is in the recording. That's right. Yes. Okay. So yeah. That's what we were saying. Like in the audio, they actually kept the explosion in. And I was like, that's so weird that that's like, it felt like it was a video joke, but it's in the actual track. And I thought that was strange. But now the flip side, now this feels odd that the music video has all of these wacky sound effects, including Al and his dancers just yelling randomly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not in the recording at all. Like they kept the recording of this very close. They yeah. didn't they didn't like mess with it. The video is like more fun uh, and more wacky. Yeah. And maybe that's why people liked it so much. I, I think so. Um, so I do want to give a shout. I think we should talk. Because you're right. These are so linked. So we might as well just cover the song and the video simultaneously. I don't think that there's anything that could be gleamed from discussing the song and then sure. afterwise, afterwards diving into the video. But I want to give a shout out to you and I are horror fans. Kevin Yeager, who did the the prosthetics for this. I know. Very, very <laughs> impressive. Uh, I still think that when Al's face is like inflating, I'm like, that is still an impressive special effect that I'm watching in this video in 2023. Like it, it is. Uh, Al did a video very recently where he talked about, um, and for people who don't know, Kevin Yeager did the uh, uh, design for Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Um, he's a real horror movie um, legend for his cost, his, um, you know, special effects work. Um, so Al getting him for this was perfect. Uh, Al did a video like um, recently that a bunch of our listeners have link linked me to. So thank you for that. He talks about the making of this video and says that, you know, this was all practical effects at this point. There was no special effects. And for the shot of his face blowing up at the beginning of the video, they kept doing it and it wasn't quite enough. And so he told them for like the final take, keep inject, like keep filling up the thing on his head until it just breaks. Yeah. And then the shot in the video is that one, and they just cut it the frame before you realize that it's not what you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks amazing. It, looks it really fantastic. looks great. And speaking of music videos, this has nothing to do with fat, but because it's going to be months to years before we get there, the to, to timestamp the day that we're recording this, literally yesterday, out of nowhere... I'll release a new music video. <laughs> Holy cow. For, Matt and I have not even talked about this for, yet. That was shocking. Yeah, for a, a animated video for That's Your Horoscope for today. And I can tell you, I did not know how much I needed a cartoon of Al skanking in my life. But great choice. It like brought me so much joy to watch that video. It was today. a great choice. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful to see uh, creators now doing these things with tracks that, you know, again, that's probably someone our age who that's a that's a great you know, by every measure, a deep cut from uh, Running With Scissors. But boy, do I love that song. I think a lot of people do, especially yeah. as kid, we, uh, ska kids in training. When Al dropped that track, that was a that was a big deal. 100%. And, yeah. and, you know, that's to promote the book that a uh, friend of the show, uh, mm -hmm. Kelly Phillips, is a part of, the, the yes. Illustrated Al, which I definitely need to get my copy. I need to go and pick that up soon. Yeah. Um, seems like a great coffee table book. I, for I, I don't have now. it yet either, but I've heard it's fantastic. Yeah. Very excited to check it out. Every time that he's released any animation on his Instagram, yeah. I've been blown away by it. Matt, I was going to say, before before we talk about the video, do we want to talk about this track in a larger sense before we dissect this video and lyrics? What do you think? So, okay. So let's let's look at that first, I guess. I, was, I wasn't sure if we should start or, or end with that, but maybe, yeah, let's start with I, that. I feel, like, I feel like getting some things on the table about this track to start with is good for then discussing the comedy of the song. For sure. Okay. So I will say that this was not something I had really even thought about until... Uh, one of our past guests, I think it was actually Chris Fafalios when he did the Eat It episode had brought up yeah. like, you know, Eat It's Good Fun for Michael J Jackson parody. Fat feels like it's very mean spirited. And I was like, I have never once thought of it in that lens. But yeah. I also looked at it a through the lens of I have always either been skinny or just a normal average dad bod size. Um, <laughs> so like. So I was like, I don't know if I'm one to talk about this, but what ran through my head was two things. I think that we underestimate how much we don't take 
fat shaming and mocking people's bodies seriously because if this parody had happened to be like i'm black or i'm gay it wouldn't have been up it we would all be on the same page like that was a bad relic of a time but in my head because it's about fat being fat and not about you know a race or or a lifestyle choice a lifestyle choice in quotes we're we're more just like Oh, it's just good, playful fun. That doesn't mean that it still can't be hurting people's feelings. Um, sure. So we were like, let's let's just put it out there, um, see what people say, and we put it out on the Facebook page, and we got a lot of great responses. And I put it on Reddit, and someone told me I should cut off my scrotums. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's kind of the divide that we got there. I will give a shout out to one comment that someone made on Reddit that I really liked, which was that they said there is a huge difference between your fat and I'm fat. Yes. And, and I and I immediately was like writing that down. That is a great response. Um, I have some of the responses here. I wrote them all down if you want to go through these. I, I think we can come back to it, but I just I wanted to like sort of set the foundation here before we start talking about the jokes in this song, because this is what we're you know, this is the, the crux of the whole thing we're, we're discussing here. So, you know, it's interesting and it's funny because this is not, you know, just to be I, I'm being completely candid in this conversation with everyone. I was as a young boy who got into Al. Um, generally speaking, for my entire life, I have been large. Yeah. Overweight, still something that I kind of struggle with to this day. I'm mostly accepting of it now. It's just how I am, but I fluctuate constantly. It's just been a thing in my life forever. And especially when I was young, and especially at the time that I was getting into Al, would have probably been like my most sensitive mm -hmm. about this. And it's not to say everyone can have their own experience. Everyone is entitled to feel the way that they feel about listening to something. This is how we all take on art and comedy and all of these things. And what is fine to someone might feel not fine to someone else. And that's that's the deal that we make when we, you know, consume other people's work. Right. Yes. If anything, I always and I saw a lot of people say this in the comments, and I think we'll go get into it later. But this always felt to me like a positive song. Yeah. And that's I how never, I saw it, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I never felt like this was making fun. Now, looking at it abstract, especially words on paper, I always feel like and, you know, there's this is a larger, more political conversation about the world now where we debate how much context matters in a conversation and how how like is the context of something you say enough to cancel out how much how bad it might be as on its own you know as a yeah. single soundbite you know what i mean like some of these things on paper are kind of shocking even just to read on paper you're like wow this is really rough but everything about al the way it's delivered especially in the video yeah i think is so i mean not to jump ahead but the last line of this song is the whole world knows i'm fat and i'm proud yeah and that is always what i took from the track and also just to to, to make it clear because uh, uh, one of the things that came up in reddit was the accusation that we're trying to make a controversy here where one does not exist and a part of the origin of this conversation for people who listen who might not know this is that al has not played this song live in many years many years he, he has stopped doing it i think i looked and i should have had this ready for me but i think the last time he played it was 2016 or so it was right so it was this and eat it were right when the finding neverland documentary came out and he kind exactly. of just walked so away from michael, michael jackson, jackson in general I, I, yeah and we're not even talking about michael jackson in the context of this debate <laughs> another entire minefield yeah. of uh <laughs> of of feelings and uh really intense serious opinions that are super valid i am I, you know generally speaking i feel like you you know however you feel about this is valid no one can take your feelings away from you you know if, if you listen to the song and you laugh and laugh and laugh or if you listen to the song and you find it offensive or mean or whatever it is that's your you are entitled to your own read of any of these scenarios and if listening to michael jackson now makes you feel cringy inside and uncomfortable and i you, i don't want to hear something that michael jackson wrote I totally get it. It makes a lot of sense. And uh, for me, this conversation about this track and how it sits now in Al's catalog is fascinating because it's one of his biggest tracks. It's one of the things he's the most well known for. And he has stopped doing it. Yeah. 
And that's fascinating. It, it, it's it's one of those things, you know, uh, th- this is an episode where tangents are going to be very easy to go down. And I'm going to try to avoid too many others. We're going to talk about this forever. But, you know, it's not uncommon for artists who have been around for a long time to grow and look back on things that they did at an earlier point in their career and go, I don't feel as good about this as I did well, when I, I mean, wrote it. We, I, you and I have had this conversation with even, I know this was before you were even in the band, but like, I love the first album by Weedis. I think it, mm-hmm. it is a phenomenal record, but there is definitely a lens where you could look at some of the lyrics on that album and go, ooh, this feels real in selling. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, like, there, and, and, and Brendan nowadays has taken to pointing out, you know, a lot of the inspiration for the first Weedis record uh, came from him being a teenager who went to an all boys school. Yeah. And he would write songs through the lens of a character quoting things that he used to hear people say, horrible things that people used to say to each other because that was the environment he grew up in. And it's kind of like, it's very interesting. You're shining a light on something that you don't like. Yeah. But you're still, the words are coming out of your mouth. So it's a, you know, and now again, uh, okay. (laughs) Well, but I think it's a good- I think we talked about this in the Teenage Dirtbag episode, how it's like in songwriting, it's a very interesting thing. I feel like you don't necessarily think about, and maybe this is changing a little bit too, but if someone makes a horror movie- another world that you and I know very well. Yeah. Very rarely does someone assume like, wow, this guy is sick and twisted and who knows what he's doing in his free time that he wrote this and or directed this horror movie. It's understood that it's a work of fiction and it came from someone's imagination. When someone's holding a guitar and singing a song and the words that come out of their mouth, it's just the way that we're wired. It feels like they are speaking their mind. Yes. And it's their opinion. That's not the case in many, many, many circumstances. Songwriters are storytellers, just the way authors or screenwriters or any of these people are trying to tell a story. And the the narrator's voice, but we're gonna. This is gonna get into this because Al does this a lot, including songs on this record that I'm also excited to talk about. Yeah. Where Al's narrator is a horrible person. Is a horrible per- well, and I think you're bringing up a good point about the songwriters because we can let actors play any role and we never stop seeing them as specifically the actor. Exactly that. But, exactly that. But like, you know, I, I love two great examples and we'll dive into fat a little bit, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. the song Your Woman by White Town is mm-hmm. written by a man, <laughs> written and sang by a man. And yep. Michael Stipe uh, of R.E.M. wrote the song Tongue on the album Monster, which is... Both of those songs are men writing a song from a woman's perspective and even going as far as trying to sing in the inflection of the woman on the track. Sure. And, you know, I think it's clear to people who are listening, to, but I remember for a while I was like, what is the deal with this Your Woman song? I it, Like, I could not, like, wrap my head around it. Until we did yeah. an episode on that song for One Hit Thunder, I never fully grasped what I was listening to. Yeah. But, again, that is so much more rare for us to accept in music that, like, people can write songs from the perspective of a character and not from the perspective of that, the actual singer. Exactly. <laughs> like, I think we just have this idea in our head that, because it's so common that it's, Uh, a man or a woman holding a guitar or playing a piano and singing a love song. And you just believe that they are singing something from their own actual life experience. And sometimes they are, but that doesn't mean that every word that they say is them telling their, I think it was Stephen Merritt, who's this uh, singer of a band called the magnetic fields who I love. I think this is his quote um, where he was just was like, um, asking him about the autobiographical nature of his writing. And he was like, I wish my life was interesting enough (laughs) that I could only write autobiographical songs and it would work. He's like, that's not the case. He's like, you have to craft a story. You have to find inspiration from somewhere in the world. And it's not all going to come from things that happen to you. Um, And that's okay. It's, I I think it's an important reminder, again, coming from a musical perspective, it's an important reminder that it's, you can say you can write a song and you can say me, I, mine, and still be embodying a character who is trying to deliver a larger message in the song. A character doesn't have to be good. If there weren't bad characters, we wouldn't have films with conflict. Yeah, you know, we need these <laughs> things in our lives to 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 uh, to put you know to to tell a story. You need to have a villain in your story, and there is something jarring about having the 
front the the person telling you the story be the villain it is uncomfortable sometimes but yeah. that doesn't make it it doesn't mean that the uh the person who wrote the song is secretly a monster well I, and that's I, a, that's a tangent against fat because again i don't think that the person who i don't think our narrator of fat who is not al yeah, it's a character is a bad, he's playing, I think it is is a bad person no. at all no, not at all. I uh, on that same plane. Whoever, whoever singing "Good Old Days" has a lot more to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, we gotta, we're gonna have to get we into that. Some, I can't wait. Yes, boy. Uh, but um, are you familiar yeah. with the group Harley Poe, perchance? No. Okay. Harley Poe is a uh, folk punk horror band. <laughs> so all of the songs are written, and uh, one of the songs went like very slightly. Uh, uh, viral on TikTok recently, um, because a guy does like <laughs> does like a segment on TikTok that's like, uh, happy songs with cringy lyrics or something like that, and he'll like listen to a song that someone suggests to him that's like, oh, you're gonna cringe hard at these lyrics, <laughs> and the song is literally called Taxidermy Girl, and it's, <laughs> and it is a song about finding his ex wife cheating on him and deciding. That he loves her too much to let her go, so after he's done killing her, he's going to in fact taxidermy her so that she's still in his life. There you go. <laughs> and it's like there you go. So clearly a fantastical out of nowhere story written from like sure. a different person's perspective. But like yeah. it's that easy for just anyone to find that song and be like, what is wrong with yeah, this and guy? On, on paper, this guy sounds like a maniac. Yeah, and, and I've, it's like, I've the talked police. to Joe. Yeah, I've talked to Joe, the lead singer and songwriter of Harley Poe, and he is like the sweetest, most normal guy yeah. on the planet i i would say that just before this is the last point i'm going to make yeah. before we get into this song <laughs> which is that what i'm here to say is as we talk about this song and talk about the jokes in it and laugh at the jokes in it i am a strong believer if you don't find this funny that's fine you are right and you are totally within your rights to not find elements of this funny if you do find it funny that's fine too yes. i think another part of the problem is people feel like like someone you upset a great deal on on the internet um uh, people don't like the idea that they are told that something that is important to them or that they love is bad yeah and i'm not Unless here to Michael say that Jackson to anybody bad. exactly it's exactly <laughs> uh, uh it, it's not there's no uh is it's a personal thing and and how your taste to this stuff is going to be your own and if you feel like the song has aged poorly you're well within your rights to feel that way if you think it was fine then and it's fine now that is completely your call as well. We are here to break it down and talk about what it meant then, what it means now, and uh, jokes. Yes, and and we'll at the very end we'll go through some of the comments. We'll that go we through got. some comments and stuff. Yeah, I, I just I wanted to put that out there before I'm talking about things that I find funny for that sure. maybe someone else would not. And I and I want to say that our plan wasn't perfect. At the same time, we're asking. Al Yankovic fans on on Reddit and Facebook friends who are more often than not like minded. So yeah, again, just because when we put this question out there and one hundred percent of the results were like, I find the song very body positive. If you don't feel that way, that is also like Matt said, totally fine. We did not yeah, have absolutely. this incredible sample size where we just yeah. blindly asked people on the street if they find the song fat yeah. offensive. We just asked people within our own scope. Hi, I'm your inner dream monologue and you're fast asleep. So I'll be quick. Great job using the Colgate Optic White Overnight Teeth Whitening Pen before bed. When used as directed, it gives you a visibly whiter smile in just seven days. So while I fly and talk to animals, you're removing teeth stains with ease. Sweet dreams. And when you wake up, keep on living life to the brightest. Colgate Optic White. Find it at all major retailers. It is mind-blowing. And heartbreaking. How many original scripts are written every year but are never made? So we seek out these scripts and bring them to life with full audio production and professional actors. Check us out at Undiscover Scripts. Movies made of paper. Wherever you get your podcasts. Free! So, music video starts off. We're on this, this subway set. Matt, I cannot tell you how many lines of dialogue I have quoted from this scene alone in my life, the amount of times that ding I have ding dong, man, ding dong, ding man. dong, ding dong, yo, ding dong. <laughs> ding that dong. is a line that that Brendan and I, uh, Brendan from Weedus and myself, <laughs> do that to each other all the time. It's one of those like, uh, um, like it's kind of like our like, what are you gonna do? Like yeah. something happens and it's out of our control. It's like 
Ding dong, man. Ding dong. Ding dong. Dude, that one. And then I love, this was like, you know, there's certain things that I look back on and I'm like, you know what? You were a pretty smart kid, Matt Kelly. <laughs> like picking up on like little details. The fact that the year after this video comes out, the beginning of UHF, weird uh, Al is working at Burger World and there's that yeah. line in this where he's like, we ain't seen you around Burger World lately. <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah. it's so good. Yeah. And then obviously Al, you know, him yelling at Al, he's like, you ain't fat. And Al yelling back, you ain't fat. You ain't nothing. You ain't <laughs> nothing with that insane look on his face. That's a funny side note too, to this. Like it was something else, again, just putting my own, some of my own personal experience into this, into this track. It is a funny, weird thing. And it, it struck me on this. Like it's an odd, I, I went through, a, uh, there was a point where I actually like lost a good amount of weight and I was skinny, like the skinniest I had been in a long time. And I had other people in my life who were like heavier people who actually kind of like these guys, like kind of got mad at me <laughs> and took it personally. And they were like, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Because it's sort of like if you're in the, being in that club, it sort of validates it for everybody, I guess, in, in some way. And I, I had that experience as someone's like, what's wrong with you? I don't want to make this the exact what, you're same. Too good, you're too good for this burger. I don't want to make this the same uh, comparisons, but I'll, I'll make two comparisons. One, it's kind of like when my brother got sober and he was like, me and my friends had a lot less to do at that point. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so even his true. friends just would like sit around and smoke pot and then he wasn't smoking pot anymore and was like, I, I don't know what else to do when I hang out with them. Yeah. We have to also talk about just like whatever is insane about this video. It's still a direct parody on an already insane Michael Jackson video to begin with. Like the video for bad is K, it's a Martin Scorsese directed video. So That's here's got the like thing, a guys. Six minute prelude before the song starts. Because yeah, I, I, you know what? I'm I'm going to just admit this because it's who cares. But in the setup of this episode, I watched the Weird Al video, of course, and then I was like, I should watch the bad video to compare them. And I clicked on it, and I started watching it, and I'm watching and I'm watching, and only after a little while did I look and realize. This video is 18 minutes long. Yeah. I didn't realize that I had clicked on the full Martin Scorsese short film, basically, uh, video of this. And uh, I didn't watch the whole thing because yeah, <laughs> I didn't have time so before this. Unnecessarily long. <laughs> it, it's a testament to how incredibly huge and uh, and just uh, the 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 stock he had uh, Michael Jackson at this point in time, the fact that he was releasing long form music videos like this, so many of them. Um, and of course they got cut down for MTV sometimes, but these still got made. Martin Scorsese <laughs> made this video for, for Michael Jackson. I mean, that is wild to think about now. I mean, I guess there's like some little, I mean, I don't know. I like, I just thought to myself about how Paul Thomas Anderson did a Tom York long form music video that went up on Netflix is like a short film of its own. That's the closest comparison I can think of to, to the modern age. But even that is so niche by comparison the, to Michael Jackson, the writer of the video bad, which the fact that there is a screen, like full credits, like four minutes of credits was Richard Pierce who wrote a bunch of novels. I I'm familiar with the wanderers because of the movie adaptation of it. But right before this, he had written the script for The Color of Money and oh later in his career wrote multiple episodes of The Wire. This is the person that was brought in wow. to write the teleplay for the plot line leading into the music video for Bad. Like it is chaos that this video exists. That um, is incredible. But yes, we we have the scene where Al starts to inflate into the into the costume. And I distinctly remember this being something that terrified my sister. Specifically that <laughs> shot that we talked about with the face. And now it kind of makes sense with yeah. the information you just gave me because she when you ask her about it, she's like, I just kept thinking his face was going to blow up. Like that his head was going to explode. And it's like, yeah. oh, because they literally that's exactly what yeah. happens. They cut at the frame before his face exploded. <laughs> like, like she was just like Ugh. so afraid of what was gonna happen. But then we get the song playing. The song's great. Every movement, there's a sound effect. There's not a single thing that he does in this Looney video. Looney Tunes sound effects Dude. all over the place for this. But the thing that he... If there's one thing that I wish stayed in the track, it's after the very first verse, right? So 
He kicks off the song. He says, your butt is wide. Well, mine is too, which is a ridiculous line, but it is no less ridiculous than your butt is Mayan, which kicks off the song bad. Imagine, <laughs> guys, here's the thing. It's hard to express how much the mid 80s were not like things now. <laughs> Even today, the idea of a guy writing a song where the first line is just your butt is mine. And that it's it is a wildly like that is a that's a crazy line. I I heard this. I want to say it was when we were recording an episode of Before My Time because my co-host Gelsey Laurie is a huge Michael Jackson fan, and yeah. apparently Bad was originally written to be a duet. It was going to be him and Prince, and that's supposedly right. Prince read the first line and he said, "Look, the first line in this song is your butt is mine." And I know that I'm not saying that to you, and you're certainly not saying that yeah. to me. Yeah, he was like, I don't think this is going to be a duet, Mike. <laughs> like, so, although I have to say, I mean, the alternate universe where we hear a version of Bad that is a duet between Michael Jackson and Prince, I mean, I, I, you know. Well, keep in mind that it's never going to happen. But boy. on this show, we also learned that State of Shock was originally supposed to be on Thriller as a duet between Michael and Freddie Mercury. <laughs> so, Michael like, Jackson had a lot of ideas at this point. He had yeah. a lot of ideas, and uh, you know, it's it's good. He was working with people who were curating those ideas. Quincy Jones, Prince, yeah. were just like, nah. sure. Yeah, let's no. do it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, your butt is wide, mine is two. Watch your mouth or I'll sit on you. The word is out. You better treat me right because I'm the king of cellulite. And here we go. He says, ham on, ham on, ham on whole wheat. All right. And there is a burp that is perfectly placed before the next verse. And I am so sad that that burp doesn't mm. make it into the final uh, like record version of this song. But what... But what does make it into the video... So two things. One, just for what it's worth, in the context of the fat theme... Ham on whole wheat is really not that unreasonable of a thing to eat. That's a pretty reasonably healthy snack in the grand scheme of what we're talking about. But the thing that he does do in the video that I love so much. So if you look this up on YouTube, and I highly recommend everybody does this. Someone has done a side by side of the Michael and Al videos, both mm -hmm. playing at the same time to see how they line up. And Al takes a bite of that sandwich and then th he eats the whole thing and then he wipes his mouth with the back of his hand like to get the mayonnaise or mustard or whatever <laughs> off his mouth. And that is in Michael's choreography. <laughs> Michael does the same move across his face with his hand and I it blew my mind. I was like, that is genius. Like, well, the what came first? Did Al write that line and then look at the video and see that it was followed by a face wipe? Or did he see a face wipe and be like, oh, I got to do a line where I wipe my face after I deliver this? <laughs> Either way, I was like, this is amazing. Well, if we have um, to talk I, about uh, him matching the choreography almost perfectly, there is no moment to me that is funnier than the all of them huddled together shot as they're shuffling shuffling forward oh my so god good. like still this day i look at that shot and i'm like this is so fucking funny yeah but he starts to do we get the first of two ho jokes um the first <laughs> one is literally just him yelling ho a little bit before the next verse the second time where someone actually presents him with a garden <laughs> <laughs> with a garden hoe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but also, I also just love how after, yeah, <laughs> after the chorus, it's just that quiet, like the bass line walking up, and <laughs> in the video, you just hear him and the other dancers just go like, ah! <laughs> like yelling in the background. It's the weirdest thing. It's so clearly like them in the spot. Like, I love that they added that, like that they kept that in. It makes the whole thing feel so much more. I don't know, like it's something oddly DIY about it, considering that it's in Michael's set. It's, it's but it, it, it feels does very feel quaint. It will, <laughs> I think I deleted this, but you know, they had to post a casting notice for looking for very fat dancers. And one of the guys in his crew in this, <laughs> in this video is just a guy who delivered a pizza. To I saw the that. Set and I they were like, that. dude, you want to be in a weird Al music video? <laughs> like, amazing um but yeah the the hose scene is great there's the spinning camera scene where you start to see like the little feet behind al like kicking as the camera is whipping him around and sometimes like uh, the brilliance of al the brilliance of like the comedic beats when when al flies off the camera someone could go big with that you know like ah 
ah! like yeah he just does this quick little like ah as he like goes flying and it makes it like 10 times funnier to me that it's well, such first, a quick just, yell yeah <laughs> like, he's spinning with the camera and it starts to look like he's just getting dizzy from the camera spin which is also just a funny joke because michael is spinning with the camera and al starts to look dizzy and then all of a sudden you see the feet flying in the air like <laughs> like he's on a ride hanging on for dear life like yeah, great little visual gags. Like that's a really, really good one too. I lo- I love that. And then even like there there are those moments where every time I watch this video, there's like more little things that I'm like, that's so. Like if you ask me why is this funny, I would not be able to explain it. But like there's the scene where they're doing the dances in front of the board, right? And they're doing yeah. like they they bump bellies. Like the one mm-hmm. dude like rips the fat one it sign off the wall. And yeah. then it just cuts to a dude in roller skates who looks like he is struggling to keep balance. And it yes. is so good. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. There's also a great in chorus, too, I think it is in the video where Al is doing the choreography. Like they're all doing the choreography the whole time. And then, of course, too, Al is doing it. And it's these very quick like punches and heads, head whips and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, everyone around him stops dancing and just starts looking at him like oddly concerned. <laughs> And confused. And Al also has this look on his face of like, what am I doing? (laughs) And something about that, like, there's just like, it's this silent little bit of comedy that all of a sudden it's like everyone is reflecting on like, wait, what are we doing down here? (laughs) It's, it's, and I I love that so much. Little, little things like that. Like, um, I also love, um, right before the, uh, the hoe, the garden hoe joke that you were talking about, or right after it. Um, the camera is panning through the subway oh, they station. they try to catch up. Yeah. And they can't they can't keep up with the camera. It's moving too fast for them to keep up with. Which I also love is a great little like uh all these little visual gags that they add to this track are so, so fun. And and again, I think that the lyrics we'll we'll get into the lyrics, I think, yeah. in conjuncture with some of the comments that we got because someone brought up what these lyrics actually are, which is, yes. is very, it's a very insightful thing to look at it. Mm-hmm. But one of the lines that has always jumped out at me is just a really funny line is when you're only having seconds, I'm having my 23rds. I'm having 23rds. <laughs> like, so, because I, even me as like, a, like I said, I'm at most a dad bod right now, but there are days I was texting my sister the other day where it was like, I just cannot, get full like like i like had like mcdonald's door dash to me i was still hungry i made a bowl of soup i was still hungry i like mm-hmm. made a sandwich i was like god i like went in my fridge there was some ice cream in there like i just could not hit a point where i was like i have satisfied myself and that was a day where i was getting way closer to having 20 thirds than seconds <laughs> on food like it was like i had probably had in in like a matter of six hours, I think I had like nine different snack sessions trying to like satisfy my hunger. <laughs> it was wild. You, you had a hung you had a hungry day. That's a that's a thing. My wife yeah, and I say hey, to each other is like, I'm, I'm having a hungry day, and you just wind up snacking. It's okay. <laughs> That's just how it goes. But yeah, I, the only other bit that I wrote down from the video, I mean, the video, you just have to watch it. Otherwise, we could just do a play-by-play for the whole thing. You Definitely watch the video. And again, I recommend checking out the uh, the side-by-side. Um, I think if you just, on YouTube, yeah, side-by-side, Weird Al's fat and Michael Jackson's bad. And it's just the two of them. You really can appreciate just how how great a job they did of matching the choreography while also poking fun at it. Um, and it, again, the choreography of this song and the Michael's video reminds me so much of what we talked about with Beat It. Because Al is making, it, it's so obvious how ridiculous the original version is <laughs> when you see it with Al side by side. Like, he's not even changing that much to make it a goof. It's just inherently ridiculous and over the top. And it's great. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, I for uh, Michael was taken so seriously at this point as a an artist and and rightfully so i mean he was like the biggest star in the world um and the the lyrics of bad like the message behind bad is is uh kind of nice i mean it's this idea of like you know like what makes you tough or macho might not be the same for someone else which again i think maybe the idea behind fat is not that far off from it. Uh, he's making fun of it and he's lightening it a little bit, but the sentiment I feel like is not that different. Maybe I think that, I think that this is truly a great song. Like, yeah. like I, uh, well, we'll get to the rankings in a second, but like I, again, I said this 
when we started recording, but like, I'm, I don't think I'm going to have very many of anything on this album ranking low. Like, yeah, like it's a lot of, it's a lot of killer and very little filler on this record for me. Yeah. Let's get a, go to a couple of the responses that we did get though from people. Mm hmm. Uh, before we do that. Uh, so my friend Mike uh, wrote that uh, I think that if anything, the song may have aged poorly, but even that is a bit of a stretch. Having been fat my entire life and overweight by over 120 pounds the majority of that time, I've never found anything offensive, and I still don't for a few reasons. One, other than Al himself, every single actor in the video is a large person. To me, it'd yep. be fat phobic if they were all skinny actors wearing fat suits or if they were um, lazy, but it shows larger people in a positive, although humorous, light, and I think that that's fine. Mm -hmm. Two, I think intention is more important than perception. That goes in art in general, in my opinion. There's no malicious intent that is inherently fat phobic. Anyone who says otherwise may be looking for a reason to be upset. Um, I could point to more moments where they struggle through getting through the turnstiles as something that I have genuinely had to deal with in my own life. And it's messed up more so that the world doesn't try to cater to people in that way unless we use humor about it. Um, and then, you know, he had a lot of other stuff. I don't want to read everybody's sure, message yeah, verbatim. Yeah. He actually messaged me directly afterwards just to clarify these. Like a lot of because he felt like he came off as angry. I was like, I think that message was perfect. But he's like, yeah, I just totally. left a screening of The Whale, and I am so annoyed at like the critical lambasting of this movie without giving it like its fair shot. Um, I, I saw The Whale, and I felt the same way about The Whale, just really quick. I thought the same. I yeah. thought it was very odd to me that uh, it was hard for me to understand how someone could see that and have that and have the idea that the idea that that movie was making fun of someone. <laughs> Uh, it, yeah. it blew my mind to think that that would be the takeaway because it felt so much more than that. Um, and again, not to take anyone's experience away from them. Everyone's entitled to it, but we all, it's easy to fall into echo chambers and, and you know, we're, everyone's allowed to have their own take. I've said it before. I'm saying it again. I'm sorry. Matt, move on. Yeah. No, no, no. That's <laughs> totally fine. Uh, Stephanie said, uh, personally, I'm tired of society believing that fat is some type of bad or dirty word. I'm morbidly mm -hmm. obese and I own it. I've never been offended by the word fat, but skinny bitches always want to believe that I should be. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And then just add it. Uh, fat has never been a dirty word. It's just our society that made it one. Um, Kelly, who we mentioned earlier, just said Al recently did an inter interview where he talked about the intentions around the song and about being in the positivity vein. Uh, I think he also acknowledged, though, that he's not a fat person and that he can't truly know that perspective. Just further proof sure. that Al is an absolute sweetheart of a human being. Yeah. Um, Damien said, uh, I'm pretty overweight myself. And after giving the video a rewatch, I don't think that anything comes off as mean spirited. Even if it's not perfect, uh, the narrator seems to be absolutely fine with their weight. Case in point, I'm fat and I'm, I'm proud. The line, don't call me pudgy, portly, or stout, is basically saying, don't beat around the bush here. I'm fat. Yeah. Uh, I like you know, that too. I'm, I'm glad he mentioned that. I forgot about that <laughs> line. I love that as well. Yeah. Uh, he said the only part of the song that uh, is a little too much for me now is the line "I've got more chins than Chinatown." That line definitely hasn't aged well. Mm -hmm. He also mentioned talking about grapefruit diet, where the character in that one actually seems slightly ashamed of their weight. Uh, sure. And then <laughs> do this out there that we do have to mention. Can we also mention that one guy in the video runs up a flight of stairs and does <laughs> then does a freaking cartwheel? He might be fat, but damn, is he nimble. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Now, those guys are incredible performers in this video that he has. They are really good. Really uh, good. Uh, past guest AJ also chimed in and said, um, at the time, fat jokes were socially acceptable humor. No one really felt like they were mean-spirited at their core, just another type of a joke. They were referred to as snaps, and they were all the rage. It was kind of a street wit in which you were pinned against other people in a battle, most oftenly insulting each other's mothers. Um, and he linked to a, a bunch of different things for us to look at. Uh, that are really, really cool. And uh, AJ, I am going to ask if you can share that stuff in the Weird Algorithm Facebook group when this episode comes out because we got a Facebook group, everybody. We um, sure do. Um, but that's a great... This I'm glad you brought that up because that was the last point I wanted to make. That, that That's what this is. Like, It's interesting because all of the lines of this song, as funny as they... And like, there are some great, clever wordplay, but most of the words of this track are... Al didn't invent these like fat slams 
that are in no. the song. Like the, uh, you know, when He's I just go to get it. the mail, it measures on the Richter scale. It, all of this, um, when I sit around the house, I really sit around the house. All those lines, like I grew up hearing jokes like that. And what makes this song, I think, positive and interesting is the narrator of the track is owning all of it. He is taking it on and he is taking what would have been lobbed as insults against him. He is owning it and saying it first and acknowledging that you can't hurt him because this doesn't hurt him because he is proud of who he is and comfortable with who he is. And yeah. that is the difference. That's, I think, the complete explanation of why this song does not feel to me to be mean or punching down or in any way. It does not feel like this song has aged particularly poorly to me at all. No. I don't think someone would write a track like this nowadays because I think it's uh, a more dangerous territory to try to occupy safely. Yeah. But, or without hurting people. And again, this is what Al has said. Like, and, you know, in talking about not playing this song so much anymore, he, in most interviews I've seen, he leans more into the Michael Jackson stuff than into the actual lyrical content. But the point he is making is that. He doesn't want someone who comes to his show to feel bad or yes. have a bad time. And so when in doubt, he's going to move away from that type of a thing. And after all these years, that is absolutely he is well within his rights. If we want to go down another path of like how mad people can get about these sorts of things, like anyone can say whatever they want. I think that's pretty well documented at this point in human history. <laughs> but Al choosing to not say something is also making that choice for himself. Exactly. And if he doesn't feel comfortable doing this song, you know, there's a million examples throughout history. The Beastie Boys stopped playing Fight for Your Right to Party and a lot of songs from their first say, record. Most of License to Ill, they don't really Most play. of License to Ill, well, they were they just like, all, you know what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At a certain point, they were like, you know what? This is not who we are anymore. And we don't feel good about these songs. And you like them. That's fine. You know, they didn't like take the album off shelves, but they chose to not sing those lyrics anymore because it didn't sit right with them. And that's their prerogative. Yeah. They're allowed to do that. That doesn't mean that they were, they got in trouble or they were doing some damage control or it was some PR stunt. It just means that someone who's going to stand on a stage and deliver lines through a microphone to tens of thousands of people should be able to feel good about what they're doing. Exactly. And just because you felt good about it once doesn't mean you're going to feel good about it 20, 30 years later. No, 100%. Uh, I've got two more quotes that I want to read. So Do Guy it. Guy wrote in and said, as a lifelong fat kid from the 80s, I found this song as inspirational. Being fat in the context of the song was a good thing. I was bragging about it. It was the peak of body positivity. And I'm going to end with probably my favorite one that someone wrote, Joey, who said, I've been considered fat my entire life. In fact, periods where I thought I wasn't fat, people made sure to let me know that apparently I was. That being said, I never felt that the song was mean-spirited. Yes, I was a kid the first time I heard it, and I didn't look too deeply into it, but I actually think that the song made me feel like being fat could be empowering. The men in the video weren't ashamed of their body. They were badasses. Mm -hmm. It almost felt like they reclaimed the term. It made me feel the exact same way that heavyweights used to make me feel. It wasn't shame. It was about the power of my own size. It's another good example. This was This was probably of almost all the episodes we've covered, the one where I was the most like... I love this song, but again, with our show as well, same with Al, I don't want anybody to be listening to our podcast to walk away feeling worse about themselves for having listened to us. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, there are artists. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you want to find an artist whose goal is to make you feel bad about yourself, you contact me and I'll send you some links. Yeah. Because those people absolutely <laughs> exist. <laughs> I don't think Al is one of those guys, and I think that um, I'm sorry, Al is definitely not one of those guys. There's nothing in his career that has ever pointed in that direction. And again, I think that, you know, no one is, I don't, no one has, no one told Al he could or couldn't do anything. He's making his own choices. And for him to not do this song anymore, as much as I take it as a message of pos positivity, as a lot of those comments felt as well. Yeah. Um, and as much as I loved it and embraced it and it, came to me at a time where I actually, like a lot of those people said, I thought it was very important. And I, I was really, um, I heard it at a time where I needed to hear it. Let's yeah. put it that way. And it, it meant a lot to me um, that I'm almost in a way I'm bummed out that he's worried that people would be so upset by it, but also I get it. It's his call and you don't have to take it personally and it's okay. Yeah. All right. Well, now's the big question. 
where are you putting this on your Al parodies list? I've picked my spot. If you want me to talk first, I, I know yeah, exactly go t- where I'm Go talk this. first because I, I'm, uh, I think I'm ready, but you go first. I put this in my top three. So it is my number three. Uh, it's in between I Lost on Jeopardy and Like a Surgeon. I still have Yoda in my number one spot and I Lost on Jeopardy in number two. But right underneath that, I've got fat hanging out in there. I love that. That's great. All right. Where are you putting it? I'm going to put it just... I'm, I'm pondering if I like this more or less. I really should think about this stuff before we record, but I don't. <laughs> and you guys really get to just hear me do this in real time. I'm going to put it just above Eat It. Okay. I think it's, so... I think it's a little bit better. And I, I don't know if that's going to be popular opinion or not, but that puts it just below I Lost on Jeopardy for me um, at number four yeah. on my current list. Not bad. And we got to talk music videos now real quick. They're impossible to separate to a certain extent. This one I'm actually having a little bit more trouble with. And I'll talk my way through this right now, and maybe you can help me out here. It's either my number one or my number two. But Okay, well, but I'll dare jump to be, in then. Dare to be stupid is such a beast <laughs> that I'm yeah. torn. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say that I'm going to put this at number two. Okay. Just underneath Dare to be Stupid. For me now, it is between Dare to be Stupid and I Lost on Jeopardy. Again, I, I can't think of... It's going to be probably a good while before a video of Al's, I think, feels this like essential to me. Because like I said, the like ding dong, all, all the yeah. visuals, everything in this video is so quintessential to me, to what I love about the track. And boy, is this just a song that is elevated by a great video. I don't think this song does as well or has as much of a legacy without this video. No, I, you know what? I'm going to put it too as well. I think, I think this is, this is, I, I agree with you. I'm trying to think of every music video that is in my brain from this point on. And it is going to be a really long time before there's a video that I, especially that I hold in the same esteem as both Dare to be Stupid and Fat. Um, the only thing that's keep, so Fat is, is the one that I quote the most. It's mm-hmm. the one that I that I obviously when I put it on I laugh. But like, dare to be stupid is just such a visually satisfactory thing to watch. Like I would put the dare to be stupid music video in the similar category as like Peter Gabriel's sledgehammer video or like yeah. Herbie Hancock's rocket video, where it's just like. You cannot take your eyes off of the screen because there's so much stuff happening. I totally agree. So, I mean, it's also like, I, in a way, some of the bias comes out as well because I'm just like, dare to be stupid on top of how great a video it is. The fact that it is also like an Al original music video that feels like such an opus of yeah. a track. Like it's it's somehow it's like this Devo tribute, but also just this incredible, like compact, uh, all things like, so much of the absurdity that we've come to love about Al is all in here. Like it's, it's so jam packed with content. Like you said, it's, it plays like a, um, it's a sensory overload <laughs> of a yeah. music video. And this is just like, you know, we talked about how, how great the matching of the choreography and the shot for shot nature of, uh, beat it versus eat. It was, this is leveled up, uh, in every way from that. Like, it's just a better version of that, that concept and it's funnier the choreography is more impressive and there's more jokes and yeah no i i i for a parody i you know in music videos we're not separating originals from parodies yeah. but as a parody this uh, as a parody video this is just so 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 yeah, well done this will almost never even be i i don't think that a parody video comes close to this this there is a very good chance that the that these two remain our one and two for the rest of this podcast's run. I, I guess it's possible. <laughs> like, I mean, I've already surprised myself so many times with some of these rankings, but like I actually feel Matt, like at the start I've, of- got, I've got something up my sleeve that Uh-oh. you are going to lose your fucking <laughs> mind on. Oh soon. my god. I can't wait. There's an episode, maybe four or five episodes from now, that you are just gonna be like, What are you talking about? It wow. is gonna be like my checks in the mail Ricky level of like no human being would make the call that I'm planning to make. Uh but Listeners, you're just going to have to keep subscribing and listening and waiting. Oh, uh, keep subscribing <laughs> and just hit that like button. 
whatever it is that you do. I don't know how podcasts work. I don't know. Whatever they're doing, <laughs> thank you. Uh, whatever, give us those... whatever you're doing, it's working. Thank yeah. you for listening to our show. <laughs> the rates, the reviews, all of that's great. Um, commenting. Uh, and yeah, check out the Facebook group, Weird Algorithm. Just search that. Hey. You'll find us. <laughs> listening to the Geekscape Network. 